How many of you have ever sat down to fish for dinner and wondered where the, the cash that you're eating even came from? Well, if it's any type of salmon, it was most likely caught right here in the local waters of the Kenai Peninsula. According to research done in 2018, Alaska was responsible for over 5.4 million pounds of fish. So there's diff many different types of fishing styles that helped result with these numbers, but I'm going to be addressing one type in particular, set net. Hopefully you'll walk away from this fully understanding how, why, and where people participate in the set net fishery. This is a topic that I'm fairly passionate about since my family has fished a set net site for many years. So I'm very excited to share my experience. So we fished us for years on the east side of Cook Inlet on Salamanca Beach. For an easy explanation of where that's at, it's just below the old agrium fertilizer facility. Perhaps those of you that live locally will recognize where that is, and maybe you'll even consider starting a side of your own. Seriously though, starting a side of your own is a very large undertaking, and there's so many parts, pieces, and permits needed to be legal and ready to fish on opening day. Okay, let's get into it. First of all, you need a permit. This permit is issued from the Alaska Commercial Fishing Entry Commission, or the CFEC. Your permit is your entry into the fishery. Without a permit, you can't fish. These are a bit tricky to get though because there's only 440 permits on the east side of the Upper Cook Inlet and that's because of something called limited entry. Limited entry is the government's way of maintaining the correct level of fish and keeping up the value of the permits. Another thing that you'll definitely need is a lease. This lease is what ensures that you can say, this is my section of the beach, this is where I fish, and no one else has the right to fish here. This particular lease is called the Shore Fishery Lease and it's way easier to get than the permit you'll get this through the Alaska Department of Natural Resources. So now that you have the right to fish there legally, let's jump into what you'll need to set up. So there's lots of ways that you could set up your site. Truthfully, you'll hear lots of people saying, this way is best, it's what we've used for years. But in the end, you'll need to decide what's best based for you, based on the layout of the beach at your site. That just makes sense. But I'm still gonna tell you about the basic layout that we've used. So the net is 210 feet long. On the top side, corks run down the gear of the net and on the other side has leads to weigh it down. The net is attached to what we call running lines. These running lines are set up in such a way that they, from, a, from an aerial point of view, they form a triangle. So two of these posts are buried up on the beach about 300 feet apart from each other. And the third one isn't really a post, it's three cement blocks tied together and they weigh 10,000 pounds each. So they weigh this much because the tides are so extreme in this section of the Cook Inlet that anything less would be moved. So these blocks are dropped out in the inlet between the two that are on the beach. We run a rope through the pulleys that are attached to these three posts and that's how it creates the triangle. So the line or the rope that we run through there is three fourths inch or five eighths blue steel poly. It gets tightened so that we can pull on it. So tight, in fact, that most people use tractors or loaders to pull these ropes. Pulling the ropes is what moves the nets. But why are we moving the nets, you might ask? So let's, let's say the tide has gone out, right? We always try to keep our beach nets so they were right at the shoreline for maximum catch and efficiency. If we don't move the net, they end up completely out of the water and not catching anything. Another issue with this, the fish that we've already catched are now drying out. And that's problematic because the better quality your fish are, the higher price you can sell them for. And that brings me to the next subject, the matter of selling these fish. There's lots of different processors that you could sell your fish to. Where you sell to is completely up to you. Most of the time, that depends on the price because each processor is slightly different. Each processor has satellite buying stations so the fishermen don't have to transport their catch as far each day. Then the processor will send out a big flatbed truck that carries multiple toads of fish for transport back to the processing plant. The processors pay you per pound to pull fish and it's not a set amount either. Different types of salmon are worth more. Humpies or pinks are worth 10 to 20 cents per pound, and they weigh anywhere from 2 to 10 pounds. They're an extremely squishy, soft meat, which is why they're sold for so little. Coho salmon or silvers typically sell for between 80 cents and $1.30 per pound. Sockeyes, more commonly known as reds, are more of a firm meat, so they're better for eating and better to sell, and they'll sell for $2.50 per pound, and they average about 8 pounds per fish. The Chinook, aka king salmon, is sold for $5 per pound, and they can weigh up to 100 pounds, but normally they're more like 50 or 60. Still, that's a really big fish. And another thing that affects the price is how well you care for them between when you pick them and when you sell them. At our site, we ice our fish in an insulated tote until we sell them. We also add water, which aids in keeping them at a cool temp and increases the product grade. That's how we ensure a better quality of meat. Something that you might be thinking at this point is, oh, what's in it for me? Like, why would I want to even do this? Well, there's so many reasons, health and wealth to name a few. Well, 
maybe not wealth because realistically it's a summer job and it won't always pay the best but you don't really do it for the money so let's take a look at why i suggest starting a summer job on a set netting site the community would be a huge part of it generally the summer fishery is a big deal and all the permits get bought out that means the beach is full of people on their sites fishing the fishing days are normally 12 hour long openings and that doesn't include the setup at the beginning of the day or the cleanup at the end the people that are the crew are together a lot you see each other at your worst and most tired but you get to know them really well and you have a ton of fun with them but not just with the crew though sometimes when there's downtime you have a fire on the beach and friends from other sites and, and other friends will come over for dinner they you might have some s'mores boat rides swimming there's uh, amazing sunrises and sunsets and there's beach combing there's good conversations with good people so that's the kind of community I'm talking about. And you make these amazing memories. Speaking from experience, you'll probably be exhausted and really silly. So everything seems really funny. You end up with stories and memories that you'll always remember. And the people that you make these memories with are so important too. Like I have this memory of a specific day. So the sun was out, there was a slight breeze. My older brother was running the skiff and my sisters and I were picking the fish out of the nest. So we picked through, we were waiting for the tides to turn so we could pick through them again. While we waited, my brother was just like slowly driving around and I was just having fun with my siblings and it seemed like the perfect day and I remember thinking, I hope this like never changes. I hope, I wish everybody could experience this, it's amazing. So this crew that you make these memories with, they also teach you these amazing things like how to tie knots, how to use a loader, how to run a forklift and captain a boat. You also learn things like how to think clearly under high pressure, quick problem solving, having patience when you're worn out and exhausted. Honestly, you end up just really growing as a person and learning so much. And all of these things will be useful for other jobs too. Some of them you can even put on a resume. I've worked on our site for nine years and this summer will be the 10th season we've had our site. Now I've been a part of the crew that whole time and I've worked my way up the ladder. Two summers ago, I became the lead deckhand and I was able to put that on my resume. That's something that shows others that I've been, a, I've been in a position of leadership. I, it shows I can handle responsibility. So that summer job helped me get a full-time job. I hope, so I hope you learned something that you didn't know before about the set in a fishery, uh, or maybe this just sparked your interest. So, cause I covered what I could, but there's so much to be said and so much to learn. So hopefully you'll look into this more. Thanks for listening.